Time now for this week's Health Matters in its new date. Uh, if all goes according to plan, you're hearing this on a Wednesday morning instead of a Friday morning. Oh. So uh, I hope that doesn't mess with your weekly feng shui and your scheduling, uh, uh, Lynn Zabo, PA. But, uh, but yeah, making, nope. making room for other things in the, in the KFUG Friday. Because everybody wants Friday. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. <laughs> Including me. Okay. I'm, the, I'm the one who, put, uh, who, who drew. I, I'm driving this crisis. But anyway, new health matter, same health matters, new day, Wednesdays on KFUG. But uh, uh, we're talking this week now about something that you've, you've often mentioned uh, as we've done these COVID shows, these COVID Where segments, is? really, really enthusiastically, and that is the mRNA uh, technology underlying these, uh, uh, most of these COVID vaccines that are coming out now. And you want to talk about that today. What should we know? Yeah, I thought I should address it again because I'm tired of people saying that this is new and weird technology. <laughs> and I'm also tired of people saying it mixes with their DNA, and that's why they don't want it both really untrue okay. it is not new well let's let's clear so. out let's clear up some of these uh, uh some of these uh, misunderstandings because uh yeah from what i've gotten from you it's this is the future yeah totally the future huge breakthrough but um it was developed and refined actually over the last 40 years and initially without much success so the Hungarian scientist, this woman scientist, her name is Caitlin, and I'm, my Hungarian's kind of rusty, but it looks like Kariko. Um, and she actually knew this would be helpful at some time. She spent a lot of her career working on it. it everybody around her said it was a dead end. They, they, she was actually demoted. Um, because they were um, criticizing her for research, you know, focusing on research that wasn't going to be of any help to anybody. But, you know, she persevered, um, came over to the United States, started working on it. And in the early 2000s, she developed um, a way to get this messenger RNA into the body and then have not have the body immediately break it down. That's when I so, read that when I read that sentence in your in your notes that led me to a question because mRNA as it <laughs> as it naturally occurs in 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 the cell. I mean it's something right. that gets used again and again, right? It combines and forms right. a little something to create a protein and then it breaks apart again, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay, and she figured and so out a way she to needed, She figured out a way to needed, like have the body not do that to the mRNA of the vaccine, right? Right. Okay. She needed to have a way to get to get mRNA for a specific antigen, that means a specific part of a disease, you know, molecule, and get it into the um, the cell, not into the nucleus where people's DNA is. It's kind of like a little, the nucleus is like a little DNA Fort Knox, but to get it into the cell and so that she could encourage the cellular machinery, the ribosomes, to take that messenger RNA and make it into little other pieces of messenger RNA and then into proteins. So, um, but she worked on it for a long, long time and, and it was really discouraging. But once she accomplished this, making it stable enough to do what they wanted it to in the body, a small German company that we now know as BioNTech started using the idea initially to immunize against cancers, but also against Zika and the flu. Mm -hmm. So, um, so they used the data from the messenger RNA flu vaccine, you know, so they had some work on the flu vaccine and they were able to use that data to change the focus to um, cause an immune reaction to the COVID spike protein. Okay. So they built on, on 40 years worth of scientific research that seemed to be going nowhere for a long time and all of a sudden had a big breakthrough. And this is what blew me away when I was reading about researching this topic mm -hmm. 48 hours after china published the covid genetic sequence moderna had the formula for their vaccine set okay so you you for some reason the the, the phone call kind of garbled those hours but 48 hours after the, yeah. the the genome for the covid the covid virus was was published by the chinese moderna already right. had the script already had their base pairs mapped out right. huh? wow so they already had the technology. It was just a matter of focusing it on, on the COVID virus. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So an Operation Warp Speed helped Moderna to go into production at that point. But um, BioNTech, the, which is the Pfizer vaccine, um, they didn't get any money for making uh, or for designing the vaccine. But I bet Pfizer got some money from the United States government to produce it. Yeah, so, right. Okay. 
So what else is this technology good for? Well, a lot of things. One is preventing malaria, which what? kills a lot of people in the world. That, yeah, that that is yeah because I mean people don't think about malaria, but I mean that's I mean mosquitoes, malaria. That's like a leading cause of death on planet Earth, right? Still, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, still. And then treating cancer, and they make this is what's so uh, what I think is so incredibly cool is they take they can take somebody's cancer and it's usually melanoma breast or ovarian but mm -hmm. it probably is extrapolated to others they take that individual's cancer and they're able to make oh, kind geez. of a vaccine against that specific person's cancer oh my god oh wow cancer is like saying cancer is probably hundreds of diseases so they can take it and they can make a vaccine so the so they can stimulate the body's immune system to attack the cancer cells specific to that individual oh my which god which is kind of brilliant that is brilliant and and this is something they found uh, they have success with yeah i'll be damned actually yeah i actually knew somebody in humboldt county that had this technology to treat her melanoma it must have been in the in the early 2000s so this technology has been around for a while mm -hmm. it's been around for a long time it is not new it's just that we've just heard about it Wow, so what it wow, doesn't wow, wow. do... It I, does I'm, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I just got to jump in here. I'm sorry. I know we've got this annoying... Yeah. I'm getting really annoyed with the whole Zoom and phone delay and all this stuff uh, uh, because right. I end up talking over you. Uh, but I'm just blown away by this. I'm totally blown away by this. This is amazing what it can do. And and wow, wow, that you can come up with a, with a personalized vaccine to immunize against your own personal disease. That's... Wow, that's pretty cool. I hope it's available well, think, to all of us. And also think about think about how much more effective the immune system is at seeking out every little cancer cell mm -hmm. than say radiation treatment or yeah. you know traditional chemotherapy treatment right much more effective well yeah it so, doesn't lay waste to whole vast systems in your body doing it you know that's that's right. amazing yeah yeah it is amazing but it does not mix with your dna like i said dna is protected in the nucleus of the cell and that's kind of like little fort knox nucleus okay so it, they don't, you know, the body understands, I guess, if you can say that, it's kind of anthropomorphic, but um, the body, the body protects DNA. It gets that it's important. It gets that it shouldn't be messed with. And the messenger in our RNA just never gets to it. So it's not like it's mixing with your DNA and making you weird. Okay. So I think that's something people really need to understand. Yeah, it's almost um, like people, they think that the DNA, like you say, it's just sitting around someplace and, you know, being, being right. mutating willy nilly and, and just, but no, it is locked away. And the DNA, I mean, it's a D as opposed to an R. There's a very, very right. real difference between those two things too, right? The deoxy right. and the ribo. Exactly. Right. Absolutely. And so the other thing this vaccine does not do is it does not make somebody sick with COVID. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I've had a couple of people call up. <clears throat> after normal immune response, which some people call side effects after the vaccine, thinking maybe they have COVID. Because there's this, also there's this idea that the flu vaccine gives you the flu, it does not. It's the person you're sitting next to in the pharmacy when you're waiting to get immunized. <laughs> well, so and people, people, does, people mistake the flu for uh, the, 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 the immune response. Well, no, the immune response, right? From the- Yeah, yeah. true, yeah, true. Um, it will not make your COVID test positive. We got asked that um, in the last couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. Somebody wanted to know if that's why their COVID test was positive. Um, <clears throat> and you still need the vaccine even if you've had COVID. And this is kind of important. This was a question that came up. Somebody who had COVID in February was told they couldn't get immunized because they had to wait for 90 days after their diagnosis. Mm -hmm. That's not really a medical reality. Okay. That's a That's a vaccine control protocol so what the problem was is there was no reason physically why he couldn't get the immunization but the place that he was living had vaccine scarcity so mm -hmm. they were trying to kind of use that to ration it okay. and uh, he wanted to argue the medical justification so he called his mom because she's a nurse and she called me <laughs> it's so, all who you know <laughs> so, yeah because i know the cdc website so <clears throat> So you do need the vaccine even if you've had COVID. And here, the um, the CDC protocol that we follow is you can have the vaccine 10 days after you're initially symptomatic with COVID. So you just have to go through your isolation period mm -hmm. of 10 days, and then you can be immunized because we don't, I guess, manage our vaccine like that. 
And the other thing, of course, we've said before, it does not affect fertility. And that's something so, that's been that's been cropping up. Uh, that's one of the lies that pops up on social media, I guess. I just I read a reference right. to that just today, but uh, I've yet to actually see anything that it does, you know. But hey, I've reproduced. Right. I reproduced. Doesn't matter for me. Uh, <laughs> hey, I'm out of the lottery. Good to know. <laughs> well, I think I think somebody I think what somebody did was they put it out there, kind of like the autism connection they right. they put something out there that they thought they wanted to be right and it turned out not to be right yeah, yeah. so what they what their concern was that the antibodies that are stimulated by these vaccines could also um, affect placental growth you know during a pregnancy mm -hmm. and would cause um you know spontaneous miscarriage or um you know preterm labor or something that is not true right that was somebody's some scientists' idea that was not data-driven, not proven to be true, um, and should not be a reason why people shouldn't, especially women, shouldn't get um, immunized. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so, yeah, so that was... Do you know, looking uh, looking forward, as far as the whole vaccination immunization scene, um, are we going to be talking about yearly boosters? Are they already talking about this going forward? Or? Yeah, yeah. I should I should kind of mention that because there's... There's been information in the media right now that says that Moderna lasts for six months, that, that Pfizer lasts for six months, and people interpret that as meaning that's the totality of the protection you have. Mm -hmm. So what what those what that data tells us and what that what they're not communicating very well in a lot of the articles is that right now, since the earliest people were immunized when it was experimental last August that we have data now saying that that their immunity has lasted six months. So that's not oh. like six months, that's not like six months period. That's right. six months so far. so far. Gotcha. And so yeah, That's a I very, don't... very big distinction to leave out of your article or, or your journal or whatever. Oh. That's just wow. Oh. Okay. So remember that one thing we get tripped up on COVID again and again is the time vector. So the T vector um and, and you have to remember that there are ongoing studies. Now, science can only tell us that as of, you know, when that article was written, so it was probably written more like in March now, mm -hmm. um, that, you know, that they had data that showed there was good immunity for six months. That doesn't, it's, and so they're still collecting that data and it's still ongoing and that question has not been answered definitively. Right, right. So, um, so a, what I'm thinking is as far as um, probably going to be fall, and then you might actually see a messenger RNA flu and and COVID vaccine together. Oh, interesting. Okay. Um, but they're also talking about maybe immunizing around the beginning of the year. So a lot of people started the you know, initial healthcare providers were immunized late December, early January. So they might immunize us again at that time. Mm -hmm. And then they also might <clears throat> go to the end of 2022. And they also might do it this summer if there's a variant of concern that means that they they have to modify their messenger RNA vaccine, which, by the way, is really easy to do. Right. It's very versatile. Um, so let's say variant of concern, I don't know, you know, um, Del Norte County gets out of control. It doesn't really exist. This is hypothetical. Mm -hmm. and, and they make a new vaccine for us to get immunized, you know, probably July or August. You know, that might also pop up. So things are still changing really, really fast. Mm -hmm. And and I think that we need to remember whenever we see an article like that, say, gee, I wonder if, you know, this is still ongoing. Are they still collecting information? This isn't really the final word. Okay. Right, right. Wow. <laughs> well, I'm glad I'm glad you're able to clear all of this up for us and to address some of these uh, these crazy, crazy things, because uh, it's just yeah. nice to have you be the voice of uh, data driven reason yeah. in, in, in this milieu of uh, crazy cross talking uh, um, hyperbole and alarmist alarmism, I guess, if that's a thing. Yeah, so, totally. Yeah. But I think I think also I would like to be the first to establish a fan club for Kate and Clarico. Never oh, right. underestimate a Hungarian woman. <sighs> Okay, and I say that with somebody whose last name is Zabo. So, um, hey, yeah, yeah, Zabri, my mom's maiden name, Zabri. Yeah, I got that too. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so you know there are stubborn folks, especially the women. Um, but I, I, if she doesn't get a Nobel Prize for this, I'm going to be just 
in the streets, man. I mean, because <laughs> it's not man. it's not saving the world, but it's totally saving the world, right? It's totally saving the yes, world. Yes, yes. Oh my God, you're and right. It, yeah. it, and it's saving the world in so many different directions. If COVID, if just COVID wasn't big enough, you know, mm -hmm, right? So malaria, flu, you know, Zika. Um, cancers, um, this is an amazing breakthrough, yeah. and we can't overestimate the amount of good that this woman has done in the world, yeah. and, and and especially because she was actually punished for pursuing this, mm -hmm. you know, she, <laughs> the job wise, money wise, all that kind of stuff, prestige wise. Well, you know, she was kind of mocked. So good for her. Good for her, exactly, and good for us too. Right on. Yeah, I was. I wanted to also make the announcement about the mass vax event that happened last Friday. I saw that at the bottom of these notes. Happened. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, w I will give you a report from the scene. It went really well. I think we did about 60 vaccinations. It was really fun because it was the United Indian Health crew with the public health crew. And, and although it took a little bit of patience and flexibility to mesh our two systems, I think um, it was really productive. Um, it, it, you know, we got to vaccinate elders in the car, which for me was kind of fun. Mm -hmm. um, and everybody did great. There were no fainters. There were no bad reactions. So, you know, the mood was jovial. Everybody was really happy to get it done. So great. Hopefully there'll be another one. I do now. There's going to be one on the 17th of April, which is a Saturday. Mm -hmm. I don't know exactly where it's going to be, but I know it's going to target the migrante population in Smith River. Oh, wow. Okay. And um, yeah, it's going to be put on by the public health department and hopefully I'll be able to be there and practice my Spanish. So. Oh, fantastic. That is yeah. fantastic. Yeah. That's always, so, always a population of concern too. And that's, that's right. great. I'll take it out to them. I have, I have a feeling it's Although they have a flyer and stuff, and they might take appointments, I have a feeling that walk-ins will be welcome. So okay, well, um, let's do that. And we, and when will that happen? Did you say? That's the seventeenth of April, which is a Saturday. Oh, that's just this um, Saturday, huh? Yeah, I think it's being advertised for like ten thirty to twelve thirty, something like that. I don't exactly know where it is, but if you call the public health department. I imagine you'll be able to find out. Okay, okay, up so, in Smith River. And there'll be translators there. It's it's going to be focused on the Spanish-speaking community. But, um, you know, I imagine that if somebody wanted to walk in, um, most of it's going to be J&J, &J, so Johnson & Johnson, mm. which is different. It's not a messenger RNA vaccine. It's, it's closer to the traditional flu shot kind of idea. Mm -hmm. um, and again, although... I think it's associated with human cold cold adenovirus, but it's not going to give you a cold. Okay, <laughs> it's going to protect you against COVID. And since we lost two people in the last couple of days in Del Norte to COVID, um, it would be good if everybody could be as protected as possible. Okay, okay, okay. You got to hold up. What? Yeah, well, according to Wild Rivers Outpost. We lost two people in I Del Norte. I, I haven't seen that update today. I looked at the I look at the uh, dashboard, the public health every morning for when I do my show. But they updated after my show, and I haven't seen. Do we have more death? We have two. So yeah, we've lost two people. So um, you know, if you haven't been vaccinated yeah. and you're interested in um, you know J and J, you might consider calling the public health department to figure out where the vaccination event's going to happen on the 17th, which is the Saturday. I think it's going to be at 1030 okay. um, so that you could either make an appointment if that's the way they want to organize it or just show up. I imagine if you just showed up, they would be fine. They want to get, they want to get vaccine in arms. So. Yeah. Okay. And just a, just a single visit, one shot, J and J boom. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll, yeah. I'll I'll remember to look this up and uh, and see if we can figure out uh, uh, you know get the details for this and, and talk more about it this week on KFUG, uh, uh the the mass vax event and when people are listening to this live on uh, on on Wednesday um, it will be in the computer being played because uh, Lisa and I have our second Moderna shot and we will be fully vaccinated come Wednesday morning. All right. And then when's your best immune response? Two weeks on. Two weeks from this Wednesday, mm -hmm. and it it's a huge relief. I'll tell you, as somebody who's kind of crossed that threshold, yeah, huge relief. So <laughs> you're just walking around yeah. breathing willy nilly, <laughs> shaking hands, <laughs> <laughs> just breathing all over. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
<laughs> well, Lindsay, well, thank you so very, very much, and uh, and we'll we'll talk to you more uh, on next week's Health Matters. All right. Thanks.